good morning or at least it's uh it's morning here you can tell the sun's out it is uh it's a beautiful day i uh i'm expecting to have a good day today i hope that you are too uh wherever whatever time of day it is it might be night time when you're watching this but I hope it's a, I hope it's a good one. If anything, it's up to you really whether it's good or not. But uh, I've got an important lesson I want to share with you today. It is uh, it is about how how real estate has has changed my outlook on life. And then after I got, it, it's funny how the Lord works. Well, it's not funny at all. It's very serious. It's full of truth and full of. Uh, of understanding and uh, the, the the gospel is just so good it transcends across all areas of life uh, you know when, when if there's one book you can see I got a bunch behind me if there's one book to read it's this one it's the it's the Bible uh, and, and you don't have to read it from front from cover to cover you just need to get into it because there's <clears throat> it, it, it's there is there's truth hardcore truths in here that can just open your mind up to a new world. I mean, completely and entirely different from the world that you're living in currently. So, uh, the, the, the topic for today is about real estate, uh, and then finding Well, it's really, it's really tip more so about business and, uh, the way that we conduct ourselves in this world. And, uh, we're going to read out of a parable in uh, Matthew 25 that uh, that taught me a lot about business, and I'm still wading through the thickness of this scripture. I mean, you literally can read this and just sit and meditate on it for weeks, months, years on end. I'll refer. I, I will likely be referring to this scripture in 40 years, and uh, and, and still how heavy it is on my mind but uh, what we're what we're reading here out of Matthew 25 is the parable of the talents and I'm not gonna I'm gonna save you the time of reading it but go read it for yourself Matthew 25 and verses 14 and the parable actually goes all the way uh, to verse 30 it's about 15 16 verses there and I'll just I'll break it down for you is Basically, there was, uh, Jesus was trying to explain to them what uh, God is doing on earth with us, why he, he's given us this earth, he's given us this world for us to, to, to conquer, basically. to uh, uh, it's, it, it, it's actually in Genesis chapter 1, where uh, 1, 2, and 3, in those first three chapters, uh, all of God's main principles that you need to learn are in Genesis. Uh, I mean, seriously, within the first chapter, you can learn so much that will accomplish things great in your life. And uh, I mean, he, he literally, he got it started off, got it started off right. And in the first chapter alone, there's enough there so that if you don't get anything else, if you just read one chapter out of the Bible, then you've gotten enough. You've gotten enough. I mean, I'm telling you, you can meditate in it for a lifetime. And... Uh, that's why I'm saying it's so important for you to get into this and read it. But uh, in in Matthew 25, uh, th this is just going to tell you a little bit about how uh, the Bible has changed my outlook on business, real estate, uh, just making money in general, like trying to be prosperous, wealthy. Uh, you know, I don't believe in a such thing as a prosperity gospel. Uh, the gospel and the prosperity of the believer are in the Bible. Uh, the two put together, whatever. Uh, it's just something made up in America for people who uh, wanted to down somebody, I guess. But uh, let's read it. So in, I'm going to read just a few scriptures. Uh, and so basically just the parable of the talents is... A man uh, was leaving the country, and he took he took three servants to himself. He gave one servant five talents, and the talent is a measure of. It'd be like saying uh, you're leaving, and you you hand one one servant five thousand dollars, one servant two thousand dollars, and then one servant one thousand dollars. 
the talents are, are, are measures or numbers. It's the way that they uh, would count and understand uh, money at that time. So a talent was those things. And you can probably read it and look it up and find something different. Uh, uh, not, not too far off base, but that's typically what, what it's the understanding is. And he give these three, three men, 5,000, 2,000 and 1,000. And And it says in verse 15, chapter 25 and 15, and to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to a, each according to his own ability, which I find is amazing. Uh, I wasn't even going to talk about this. And immediately he went on a journey. And it's so funny. It says, according to his own ability. So, for instance, you've been given an amount, and you think that, it's so, it, it, it is absolutely crazy how the Lord does this. But if you've only been given a little, the Lord knows that you're able to handle that. And it may be just a very small amount. But he understands who you are better than you do. And you can take that little and turn it into more. And he's expecting you to do that. And you're going to see that in this parable. Uh, so he, he, he did that. Uh, one that received five went and traded the five made another five so he had ten uh, the two did the same as the other he took the two went and turned it into four so he doubled it he multiplied it which is crazy he doubled his money uh, and then the last one who was only given one and remember it's according to his ability so the, the, the master the, uh, the man he knew that this guy was less capable, so he only gave him one. And then that man, he went and dug in the ground and he hid his Lord's money. He hid it. Uh, which is representative of a poverty, poor man's mindset. And many people do that. They think, oh, I'll never be able to make any more money than what I have. Let me store it away. No one take it. It's mine, it's mine, it's mine. And they think everybody's out to get them and get their money when that's absolutely not true. Uh, after a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he came and he, he expected of them. He told the, the, the gentleman who had taken five, turned into ten, he said, good and faithful servant, good job. Uh, I'll make you ruler over many things, enter into the joy of the Lord. And then with the two, he said... Uh, he said, well, you, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I will make you faithful over many things. And then we get to the last guy. And this is the lessons that need to be learned. It's the conversation that he had. I love the fact that Matthew notated this. It's definitely divine. You need to understand this for business, for your life in general. And this is to help you grow wealthy and help your family. Um, he said... Lord, I knew that you were a hard man, reaping where you have not sown, gathering where you have not scattered seed. So, uh, let, let me just finish it. And I was afraid and went and hid the talent in the ground. Look there, you have what is yours. And the Lord answered and said to him, you wicked, which is so crazy. It's like I give you a thousand and you only give me back a thousand. He called him wicked and lazy. You knew I reap where I have not sown and gathered where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited it, the money, with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received mine own back with interest, or in the King James it says usury. Uh, therefore, take the talent from him. So they took it from the guy with 1,000 and he gave it to him who had 10. The guy who was most faithful and t doubled it with the most. And then he says, it says, for to everyone who has, more will be given to him and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. In another place in the Bible, it says that, it says that if you don't understand money, how can you 
grasp things of real weight and real glory. Money is one of the basic things in the principles and in the kingdom of God. And if you can't get a grasp on money, then you can't understand the true weighty heaviness of spiritual things. And that, I mean, that, that's basically what it says in the Bible. And he, he literally, I mean, he says that this man who just dug up and hid the thousand, the thousand dollars or the one talent, he called him wicked and lazy. Absolutely crazy. So there's so many things to, to, to break, break loose here. I've taken some notes. So he said that I knew you were a hard man and you reaped where you have not sown. And, and, and you, what, what exactly does it says? It says, uh, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered. So basically he's saying that this Lord is a master of arbitrage. Arbitrage is where you purchase something and then you sell it for the difference. So like it's, un, it's hidden value, being able to notice where there is hidden value. For instance, in real estate, you buy a home and, and, and I'm gonna use some small numbers here, but say you buy a home for 50,000 you see that it has hidden potential. You cut down some bushes, you mow the yard, you slap some paint on it and fix a few plumbing, a little electrical, replace the air conditioner, whatever the case is. Say you spend $20,000 in remodels, so you've got $70,000 in this home and you sell it for $100,000. And it's like, I didn't build the home, I didn't do anything, but yet, uh, and, and that may even be a poor, poor case, uh, for instance, uh, because you, you sowed a little bit, say you sowed $20,000. We'll take it for a different, a different deal. Say you find someone who is, uh, you know, down on their luck, whatever that is, and they need to get rid of their home. They're like, Hey, I can't pay the notes. I lost my job. I'm going through divorce. I've got bankruptcy, whatever the case is. You purchased the home for $50,000 to get them out of the situation they're in, they can't wait. It's like, I don't have time. I've got to get this off of me or else I'm going to be in extreme deep duty. Okay. I got to, I got to take care of this. So this guy, you buy the house for $50,000. You sell it for a hundred within four to five months. You just profited $50,000 minus a few things The maybe that you had paid a light bill. You paid a few things, um, interest while you, you know, say you borrowed the money to do it, you paid for interest on the loan, uh, you paid the real estate agent, you paid closing fees when you purchased the house. You know, say you lost, say out of uh, $100,000, you profit 40. Uh, let's just crap, you profit $25,000. You didn't do anything. All you did was take it and transfer it. And there's things in real estate where it's even, uh, you know, wholesaling where you find a property, you buy it for 20 and you immediately sell it to an investor, you know, in, in, in a term that's called a double close, literally within 30 seconds, you own the home, but then you immediately transfer it to them. You actually bring no money to the table because at that moment you are not holding any money. You, you don't need to, you buy it for 20, you sell it to the investor for 30 and you make whatever the difference is there. Uh, after closing costs, whatever fees that may incur taxes, you walk away with five or six thousand dollars, and all you did was make the deal. You just reaped where you have not sown. So arbitrage, those type things, that's all in real estate. It's in other places too. Uh, for instance, you could buy in this time, Bible times, I would say you'd buy a vineyard. You did not sow, you did not do anything, but you purchased a vineyard. And then immediately you start incurring income the next spring or whenever harvest time is for that vineyard. And you didn't sow a thing. Good job. Uh, another thing that he says here is understanding interest. He says, you should have at least deposited it with the bankers. Some people would think that interest is a uh, robbery that you're charging me for something that you're not doing the work on. All you're doing is lending the money. Or say you take your money and go uh, invest it in something, you expect a return on that investment. Interest is a good thing. And if you are okay receiving interest, 
then it is okay, and it is okay in God's kingdom to pay out interest, which means loans are not 100% just of the devil, okay? It, there are certain personalities on the internet that will just absolutely tear you limb from limb if you say, I'm going in debt to start a business or whatever the case is. That's just not the case. The Bible here, basically, he shares a parable saying that interest is okay and it is a good thing, especially when you're receiving interest. If you're having to pay out interest, I still believe it's an okay thing. At the end of the day, when it says, oh, ma oh no man, anything, it's dependent upon the contract. For instance, if I borrow money from my home, my contract says I pay $1,000 at the first of every month. If I pay that, that $1,000, then I owe that man nothing because the contract is $1,000 per month for 30 years. I owe that man nothing for another 30 days. At 30 days, on the first, I owe him $1,000. If I pay him, I owe him nothing. So I, I believe that that's what, uh, I believe that's a more true understanding of interest and loans. But uh, then we get on to uh, uh, just the fact that he, the understanding of multiplying what you have to one man is more capable and he may have five talents and you're jealous of that person. You should never walk in jealousy. You should always walk in thankfulness. Thankfulness is absolutely the key to get rid of, getting rid of jealousy is understanding that what I have, I'm thankful for. God has given it to me. He understands that I can take it and do what I need to with it. Uh, if you're blessed and have received more, then there's more expected of you. And uh, that's a serious thing to, to, to take into uh, thought, into mind. Uh, if you don't, if you, you know, you're still blessed if you have breath in your lungs, but let's just say, for instance, you've had a hard go at things. You may not have received as much. There's not as much expected of you, but it's the same percentage wise. For instance, the man with five turned it into 10, the man with two turned it into four. And it said that he was gone a very long time. So for instance, it didn't happen in a matter of weeks, but the man that was given one absolutely did nothing in for a long time. That was worse than anything else. Multiply what you have. Another principle here in this uh, in this is the Matthew principle. I have a uh, a book somewhere in here that goes through and breaks down the Matthew principle. It says, "To him who has, more will be given. To him who has not, it will be taken away, even that which he has." It is godly to multiply what you have. And it is demonic, evil, to hoard what you have, hide it, bury it, and not reach your full potential. It's just the truth. Uh, sometimes that's hard. The reason I say this is because it's 100% not about you. It's not about consuming. It is not about, uh, for instance, these men, when they turned, when the Lord returned, it had been a long time. They lived off of very little. This is what, this is, this is good right here. They lived off of very little, but they had double what was originally given to them. Uh, wealth building is not for you to consume but it is for others because out of your wealth, you can bless more people. You can give to more. The, uh, the good servant, or no, it was uh, the good Samaritan. He took care of the man. He picked him up, put him in a room. He had money. He had a lot of money and he took care of that man. Wealth building, understanding godly wealth principles is not about you. It's about others. You need to get to where you understand it. <laughs> I hope you guys learned something today. Uh, I love you. I know that sounds crazy, but I do. <laughs> we love our, everyone. Uh, God loves you. God's love's within us, and we can give it. So I hope that you've gotten something good today. Get out there and have a good day. All right.